Hello witches, today I am talking about a subject I see on literally every video I make on The Witcher 4, or I should say Witcher Polaris, but I think The Witcher 4 is the more popular name, but anyway, it's something I have talked about on this channel, my other channel, playthroughs, basically anything I do involving The Witcher or just games in general, and it's this idea of having a Witcher game that lets you choose which school you want to be in and essentially design your own Witcher. It's a controversial idea and one I have conflicting feelings about, so today I wanted to talk about this subject further and discuss some ideas I've been having recently reflecting on if it could be good or bad, how this could be cool for the next Witcher game, just positives, negatives, and as I said just how it can fit into something we all enjoy playing. I want this video to be a kind of exploration of this concept because I imagine many fans like me are skeptical of this sort of Witcher game and perhaps if you hear some of the ideas I've been trying to come up with about this it could help you decide whether or not you're interested in a game like this at all or if it just gets you more excited if you are already pretty excited about this potentially happening so let's get into it This is an idea that I have been seriously considering since Cyberpunk was released, and it is based on the system that is actually in that game for the protagonist V. In Cyberpunk, you essentially all play the same protagonist, similar to Geralt, with the same general overarching story that can branch and change in a similar way to The Witcher 3, except you can also choose which area or background you want to start from, so where your character came from. It's relatively inconsequential for your later decisions in the game, but it is fun to think of your V coming from a certain area or having a certain background. It reminds me of a mod I used to play on Skyrim called Live Another Life where you can just pick do you want to start as a bandit, do you want to start as a member of this guild or something and it doesn't actually mean anything for the game because it's still basically the same. You just get to skip the first cutscene and you can kind of play in your head oh my character's from here even if it doesn't have that much of an impact and that sort of stuff is important in games. But essentially the idea I've been thinking about is that you could just have this but with a Witcher game. So my idea goes as follows, you will pick which Witcher will find you as a child of surprise Surprise. Then, depending on which school you choose, you'll be taken as a child of surprise to that witch's keep during the height of the witch's strength, you're going to be trained in the ways of that school, and your school will fall eventually, leading to you going into exile and eventually having to found the School of the Lynx. Something like that. I mean, there could be other reasons you'd have to leave the school, but I think it needs to relate to the School of the Lynx, because that's all we know about the next game. This idea kind of relates to an idea that I proposed about four and a half years ago or so, and this was when I was designing my sort of Witcher fan school, the school of the Leshen, and I made a video in which I thought, well, the Witcher George is traditionally school of the Griffin, but I wanted to make my own Witcher George, so I thought it'd be cool to have a Witcher from the school of the Griffin, you know, the school falls, and then he make well, not falls, but he decides to leave the school of the Griffin and makes the school of the Leshen, and it's a secretive school, which is why you don't hear about it. And I think this sort of idea could potentially work with the school of the Lynx, because we've never heard of the school of the Lynx before. I mean, CD Projekt Red have done the sort of thing where they wreck on the past a bit and add the schools in and we just didn't hear about them before, but it might be quite cool to have this school as a kind of more secretive school and that's why we didn't hear about it, and it would be cool if it linked to the existing lore in some way. So essentially, all our witches, although they are relatively unique because they're from different schools, they would be the same character except from that aspect, they would end up leaving their school in some way and then they would found the school of the Lynx. But your witch's fighting style depends on which witcher school originally found you, so if you're a bear witcher, you use heavy armor, griffin witcher, medium armor, that sort of thing. And if you decided to have the game in this way, the lore could just be kind of vague, so it could just be the School of the Lynx was founded by a witcher from a different school, and then the School of the Lynx developed in a certain way that became the same regardless of which witcher started it. So I'm saying that the School of the Lynx would still essentially be the same, but just your character would be slightly different, if that makes sense. And then as the games go on, if they have games set in the future where they discuss the School of the Lynx, it would just be a witcher founded it, and then it developed to have this fighting style, so it doesn't really matter. And that's one way you could kind of fit in character creation and still keep the lore a little bit coherent. So this idea is a kind of make your own character idea because yes, we would all have the same character, just with different schools, but as I said, it does allow for that little bit of individuality and allows you to play the game in a different way depending on which starting school you had and have that kind of headcanon for your own Witcher, which could be quite interesting. The next idea, which I'm not a massive fan of, is to go the sort of Bethesda route and basically I combine this idea with the previous idea, so it is essentially the same character, 
but we can design their appearance and pick their voice from a list of preset voices. So still the same story in regard to founding the school as the previous idea, but it becomes even more vague in the Witcher lore. So the founder in this case would have to be essentially unknown because we can't say it was this Witcher that founded it, but you know, we don't really know their previous school. It would just have to be our Witcher founded it from this school because if we could name the character, pick their voice, pick their appearance, it becomes this thing where as the games go on, unless they have some incredibly complicated system of picking choices and designing your old characters or importing them or something, you just couldn't really have that. You'd have to sort of ignore the character exists in a way or just they are the Witcher, you know what I mean? They're, they're not like a particular person or something. And of course, just to pair this idea a little bit with the obvious idea, you could literally have a Bethesda route, so you have the basic main story and you completely design the character, like you choose their name, their face, they are a completely unique character in the world and that's just your character and they have a general kind of title or something like that. That's essentially the create your own Witcher story, it's not even an established character within the lore, it's just this is a Witcher character. So I will do another video in the future discussing more ideas if I come up with any, but this is the last idea I want to discuss for this video, and I'm discussing this idea because quite recently I mentioned this in a video and I've developed it a bit since then, and people seem to quite like this idea, which I was quite surprised about to be honest, but a lot of people seem to sort of give me feedback on this and say they liked it, so I thought I'm going to include it in this video, develop it a bit and see what people think. So this is an idea that, due to the vague nature of The Witcher 3's endings, it is possible in all of them that Ciri lives. So, if she's the Empress, obviously she lives. If she's a Witcher, obviously she lives. And the ending where she might kinda die, it's not entirely obvious whether she lives or dies or just doesn't want to go back and see Geralt. So, you could argue that she did live. So, in all these instances, she can carry on. So, obviously, we're working from the idea that at the end of The Witcher 3, she lives. And from here, she could found the school of the Lynx. And this actually makes a little bit more sense than you might think, and it's due to essentially her connection with the Cat Medallion. She has a lighter fighting style than most of the Wolf Witchers as a girl, because in the lore we know all the Wolf Witchers are boys, and they generally seem to have a heavier style, she has a light style, and she works to her advantages, which is really cool about her character. But obviously she also has a connection to the Wolf School. So she has a connection to a cat and a wolf, and it's a very... I think symbolism is an important thing, and I would say looking at a lynx, I did a big video about lynx recently, and I would say that lynxes, or lynx, they, uh, they are kind of like a cat and a wolf sort of mixed. And if you look at Ciri, she has this lighter style, she has a cat medallion, she has all this connection with the wolf school. If she's going to go out on her own and make her own school, I feel like a lynx is a pretty good animal for her to pick. And it would be an interesting development for her character, because we see her going from training as a witcher, to living as a witcher, not having the mutations, and then trying to create her own witcher school, which could be an interesting thing for us to see. I'm not saying we play as Ciri, I'm just saying that she could be a central character in a kind of mentor role, a little bit like Vesemir or something like that. So from here, our character would just be a member of this school on their own journey. Of course, that would mean the founder of this school isn't a proper witcher. As I said, as Ciri, and I hope to God they don't do this if they ever went for this idea, that she just does not undergo the witcher mutations. She doesn't need to. The whole point is that she's kind of a witcher just by her life as opposed to by actually being a witcher. And you may wonder how do we become a witcher if she isn't, and I was thinking perhaps she employs the help of Eskel, as he seemed to be sort of still four witchers as opposed to someone like Lambert, and then they could work together to try and establish this school, and they could try and recreate the mutations, they could get help from some other mages such as Triss or Yennefer or some other mages that could be available, and then they would work together to create a brand new crop of witchers. So in the lore, girls cannot become witches, and I wanted to add this little point because this is a bit of contention between a lot of fans, and I think that perhaps, as this would be a new school with new lore that they could develop, you could find a way to allow for this, or perhaps girls still can't be a part of this and the lore is left alone. To me it sort of depends on how it's implemented, because I think the reason has to be that it serves the story. For example, if they went back and said, Actually, there were loads of girl witches in the School of the Wolf and all the other schools, and they were always there, we just never talked about them. That would feel kind of annoying, and it would be like a big retcon, and, you know, it's like a part of the lore, and it's, it's sort of like, where do you stop when you keep doing that? They already did it with adding all the other schools, and that was interesting, and they did that in a good way. But I think that with this particular issue, it would be better if they sort of decided to add it, as opposed to sort of retcon it, is what I would say. So as I said, if they add it, they could, for example, have Ciri and Yennefer or Triss or some other mage. They develop mutations that allow for, say, a very select group of girls that are able to pass it if they are just strong enough or they have a certain magical ability within them or something and they can take the mutations a lot better. Something like that. I mean, maybe they have to be sources or they have to have some kind of connection and they're able to enhance their strength to be able to 
take the kind of mutations. It could be an interesting way to handle it. So as I'm saying, if you could fit it into the law in a less invasive way, I think this could be quite interesting if handled carefully. But as I said, it really depends on the execution of how they do this. But I wanted to get back a little bit to why they would even want to develop a new school, because you need a reason, I don't know why Siri and Eskel would just decide to make more witches, and I had a little bit of an idea for this, because, well, witches are a dying breed, and what do witches need? Well, they need to fight monsters, that's why they're needed, so let's just say another conjunction happens. There's no rule on what causes a conjunction or doesn't, and it could just happen. There's nothing against the law that says another conjunction couldn't occur. You have a bit of foreshadowing of this with the Unseen Elder's Cave, and he talks about how one day the gate will reopen, and you think, well, how would that happen? You would assume a conjunction. And maybe the gate will reopen, and maybe he won't be able to get back, and more vampires will come through, and then he'll be very angry, potentially, because he can't get back, and you never know what that could lead to. More monsters could come through in this conjunction. It could be a whole new thing where all the major cities are getting attacked. Let's say Siri is the Empress in one of them. She thinks, right, we need monster killers. We need monster killers to deal with this new monster problem. Let's make some more witches. I'm going to contact Eskel. Let's get this school working. If she's just a normal witcher, could be the same thing. If she was in a different world at the end of The Witcher 3 where she might be dead, that ending, <laughs> she could come back and be like, I want to help with this, let's make a new school. It could be anything like that. And I think that would be a pretty interesting story. And the way this idea could be related to character creation is that we yet again could just decide our own voice from a preset list, design a character's face, possibly gender, if that was implemented in a law-friendly and story-driven way, name, that sort of thing. And it could work within this idea of Siri being the leader, and then we have to sort of become our own Witcher within this story. We can still be the sort of main character, but maybe slightly secondary to it, so then we don't have this massive impact on the lore, and we can sort of watch Ciri and Eskel and these other characters do things. Of course, we would have to have some kind of role, but I suppose in later games we would just be referred to as the Witcher or something like that. But of course, as with most of the ideas, this idea could work with a set character and doesn't require character creation at all, but I thought it worth mentioning due to it directly tying to the game The Witcher 3, which is why a lot of people play The Witcher anyway. The positives to this are that we finally get to make our own Witcher. We get to decide which combat style we want to pursue, we could get to decide our own character's face, how they fit into the world, and really we could feel a personal connection to the world of The Witcher, as if we're in the game or something we made is in the game. It's enjoyable to make your own character and feel as if something you made is in the world that you enjoy. It could also be interesting to establish ourselves in The Witcher's lore, even as a kind of vague character, so that in future games we can sort of imagine that it was our version of the character that did that. A little bit how, like, in Skyrim you sort of imagine what your character in Oblivion did or something like that. It's, it's an interesting thing to consider in regard to a Witcher game. The biggest drawback for me is that it makes the lore less rigid. It means that our character would essentially always be relatively inconsequential. We couldn't truly impact the world unless it was the last Witcher game or something, because future games would either have to forget our character's face, name and background, or it would have to create some sort of system where we could import our characters, which I just can't imagine them being able to do that for a sustained period. And even if it was something like we are just the champion of the Link School or something like that, it would still make our decisions a little bit pointless in the previous games, which I don't really like that kind of thing where we're sort of not allowing for the possibility for decisions to have impacts. We're basically saying this game, you're just going to be the champion, blah, blah, blah. This is what's going to happen. I, I kind of like the idea that the games can potentially impact each other as they go on, like how it should have done more with The Witcher 2 and 3. It did a bit, but it would be nice if they could actually implement that in a better way. And if we make our own character, I just can't see that being something they can do. Further, I think having a set character in regard to The Witcher is more engaging for me. I care about Geralt's background, for example. I care about his relationships. I like talking to other fans about him. If it was just my own character, we lose that shared connection. Instead of one character we all feel connected to, we have a nameless protagonist who isn't really in the lore that we all have our own sort of stories about in our own way. Just our sort of headcanon lore that our character was the one that did it, and we don't have this kind of shared experience of, ah, oh, Geralt did it. You know, we, we can't really say that, we just have a kind of protagonist. It's like, for example, in Skyrim, when we talk about the Dragonborn, who do you think of? Do you think of your character? Do you think of the iron armor wearing Dragonborn in the trailer? Do you have any idea what his personality is like? Who does he love? Who does he care about? What are his relationships? Is there anything you really know about that character? Unless you really like read some books or look into the lore or something like that. 
And of course, the beauty of a lot of those games is that none of that really matters. We just make up our own story entirely in an existing world and know that the Dragonborn killed Alduin. That, that's kind of all we really... We know a few other things, obviously, but that's kind of the main thing. And that's great and everything, but in The Witcher, I love the politics, I love the relationships, and I love the characters in The Witcher's story. It's not Skyrim, it is The Witcher. I like watching Geralt and playing as Geralt and interacting with stuff and feeling like I'm playing out Geralt's story and I get to sort of decide little bits of it, but it is Geralt's story. I like seeing him interact with other characters. I like seeing him talk to characters like Vesemir, Esko, Lambert, and Letho. I'd love a game with a character like that, that I can be like, oh, I really like that character, I like them because they do this, and I like them because this is what their style is, this is their history. It's cool making your own, but it is... We have a lot of games that allow for that, and I think one of the great things about The Witcher is that we do kind of get told this is the character, and now you can sort of make a few decisions about what they're going to do, and I, I really like that. So essentially, my fear is that if we do have a make-your-own-character game for The Witcher, and that is the sort of staple thing going forward, we could lose that part of The Witcher games, which is something I enjoy. Making your own character would undoubtedly be interesting, but I feel I would prefer an engaging set protagonist. Now, does this mean I don't want to make my own Witcher, or I don't want to ever see it happen? No, it doesn't mean that, but just personally, for The Witcher, I like having an engaging protagonist with a set history, personality, relationships, someone that I can look at and be like, yep, that's that character, I really like that character. However, some of the ideas I have proposed today allow for both to a degree, so with whatever The Witcher 4, or Witcher Polaris, or even other future Witcher games ultimately offer us, I'll be positive and open to it. Unless there's something incredibly troubling in them which just makes me not want to play it. I doubt that's going to happen, but... You never know. But anyway guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. I would really like to hear what you guys think about this. I know this is something where people think, why don't you want to make your own Witcher game? I think I've sort of explained it, but I'm open to it if they decide to go that route. I'm not so against it. I'm just saying why I would prefer to have your own character. And I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you agree with that, if you can see my point, but you have your own perspective, it's, it's interesting to see. So do let me know. Really do appreciate that guys. It's very, very kind of you to let me know that sort of thing. Please support the sort of content by liking, Subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that stuff. Check out my other channels. I do other videos and stuff, and it might be nice to see what you guys think. I'm getting a bit busier recently with stuff, so I'm not sure how consistent I can be on all three channels. I will try my best to do stuff here and there. But yeah, I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching, and have an awesome rest of the week.